Hello. The airplane is considered one of the most safest way of travel for two reasons. One, it is thanks to the aircraft traffic controlling management because an airplane is handed over to an airport from airport just like a baby. That's what they do. And the next one is the level of precision that goes into manufacturing components, parts like doors or door stops or wheels or engine spinners that goes into an aeroplane makes a crucial part of why airway is so safe. It's a safer way of travel. Hi, this is Ananda Bhatmanavan and you're watching the ground reports from the print. And I'm at a facility in Belagavi, which is an India's, we can call it India's very first aircraft component manufacturing ecosystem considered in its length and breadth and capacity because they build from raw material to a complete part here in this facility in Belagavi. A single part, for instance, collecting the raw material to a finished product goes from country to country. It's more than 5000 kilometers of a travel. But then here, it's less than 500 meters. Let's go check it out. How is it done? And what are the nitty gritties involved in aircraft component manufacturing? Hope on with me. This is Ananda Patmanavan again, and you're watching the ground reports from the print. The manufacturing really does not happen in big cities. Mumbai, like cities like New York, London, many more. And over 30, 40, 50 years, they all moved from there to the hinterlands. And the skill what is required doesn't really migrate, you know, easily. When they, when they start working and it's a very skill driven, you know, the capability driven, technical, highly technical. So here we are pretty much doing uh, aluminum, titanium uh, and steel parts. Mostly uh, for one of the Airbus division, a, a German division, which makes the fuselage for Airbus A321. What is fuselage? Fuselage is the where you actually sit inside, okay. you know, it's an it's a aluminum frame okay. and it has all these fittings and everything goes into the into the structure that is basically a tube okay. right yeah, many tubes get connected different sections get connected and becomes a long fuselage okay. and uh, and airbus does certain two two airbus uh, one of the uh, Fran uh, german division does two of those sections and we support parts to those sections okay you know and uh, make some end to end product. you take the raw material yeah, you take the raw material for example uh, if you look at it uh, this could be the uh, starting point and this could be a, 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 a plate and we, we would have done that halfway to right now and it will be a finished part I can show you some finished parts this has a traceability all the way from material from the mill you know which mill it was done when it was manufactured a plate was manufactured and what was the when heat treatment was done what parameters were used on the heat treatment the material record is there in this you know, it, it traces back, the QR code traces back oh, in the SAP okay. system and says that and it's going to tell, hey, you have to go through the process the of family history. History, literally family history. Yeah. Because we have to maintain this 30 years after the part is done. So we have over, uh, I would say, over 70 machines in this building. Okay. Uh, CNC machines, they're all called com computer numerically controlled machines. These machines are programmed to cut material in the shape and form mode we want. So typically this happens through a very controlled process. When a drawing comes from the customer, it, our engineering team looks at it and writes the process in which you have to cut it to achieve the final shape. Oh wait, the customer only provides the drawings and you program it according. Everything, every, we stay raw, raw material, how it is going to be and then how it needs to be processed to achieve the final with the tolerances and various tolerances and everything that comes through. So what is the next unit that is so crucial about in aerospace component manufacturing? So we are uh, going towards like a, a, a something called FMS, flexible manufacturing system. Okay, facility where uh, where here you saw individual machines. Yes. Uh, a person loading from one machine to the other machine parts, different operations. In FMS, it's all automatically moved. Okay. So one person loads, fully finished part comes in. Oh. Like a fully, but then fully automated washing machine, almost. It okay. is like that. Okay. <laughs> a person loading and coming, and uh -huh. unloading. So it was the first of its kind. Of setup. And why is this important to have an automated? Machine? Because to understand what it takes to do something where a human intervention is not required. Because whenever human intervention, there are chances of error hmm. and slows down the machine, stops the machine. And when you put that much of capital, you want it to be operating full time highest level of efficiency. Whenever you stop the machines, lose the efficiency. So, idea is to, how do you program 
your machine such a way that it can run in without it. Uh, so we continue to do that and I always encourage our machine tool industry to come develop you know okay a reliable five axis machine which can give me uptime of 98 99 99.5% that's uh, so close to 100 yeah it yeah. has to be because when we invest this kind of we use we we basically say that hey it needs to be able to deliver consistently uh, is there any other companies in india who does it like uh, they we have FMS. there are other people FMS. who also now started putting the fms in there okay. because uh, because it, we, the, we were the first one to do it and show the aerospace industry this can work you know, work means help us improve, you know, productivity. Mm. And uh, this also helps us, you know, see how our competitors in West were doing. So, the, you see a battery of machines on that side. Okay. Here is the loading and unloading happens here. The one person manages the whole full cell. There is no, like, you can see that in moving, taking the parts, uh, the, a, 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 you know, and going there and, and mounting it, it will go and mount uh, on the machines. So here the person loads the materials and yeah, waits here. And, and waits here. No roaming and, around. Not, no. Uh -huh. And uh, all that happens and automatically the, 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 the anywhere of the tool automatically sensed and you know, a tool change request happens and there is a spare tool already there and it takes that and start working on the next one. Uh -huh. And if the tool breaks, it senses itself, the tool has broken and it gets the next tool from the system. So where does this aluminum go into the aeroplane? Like? Yeah, this is also the, this is also going into the uh, part of the uh, fuselage, what we saw, you know, yeah, the, that's what is going and some portion of the wing also we are doing here okay. in this location, wing components. So this is a whole input. This is the, this this is is the input get. material. Okay. You know? Okay. And uh, maybe you can go down and see some uh, yes. finished parts in there, which are, which, are, which are in there. And then they go through the whole machine and it comes out as, an as a finished product. part. Yeah. Ah. In a single setup. And then where it will go to? Is it are you ready to be used or it will go to They are ready to go for surface treatment, surface. coating and yeah. then come back. You can see a finished part here. Into this. 85% ah. like of the material is removed. It's sculpting, you know, ah. almost like a sculpting. And it is uh, it is removed, and uh, 85, 80 to 80, 85 percent of the material is actually removed mm. from the block. What and are these like this, the cutting? These materials? are cutting tools. These oh. are the cutting tools. They are the one who are actually sculpting different oh. different shape. Okay. You know? Yeah. So this is a, look at how many cutting tools it has. It's a banks of cutting tools. Over 150 cutting tools are okay. there. Okay. You have many sculptures in there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they all used each of them. They, they, this is where the engineers program it. Which tool to use? What to use? When to use? Oh, that's where the human human needed. human inter, in, engineering human. intervention oh, is required. Okay. High level. Because so do you see this being automated as well? The choice of selection. Potentially AI. There are automated tools. AI could happen, but. The human skill again, you know, getting the, uh, the fastest way to do things based on experience. Uh, the surface treatment is the last process in our ecosystem from forging to machining to the surface treatment. So what we do here is uh, we prepare the part uh, uh, good for wear resistance and uh, corrosion resistance. Part, but then what this is? Ah, uh, this is a very interesting part. It is called spinner for an aircraft engine. Okay. And uh, when you sit on the uh, aircraft through the window, if you observe, this is the front side of the engine mm. which rotates. Okay. And this is a real uh, ecosystem what we say here. Right from forging, machining to the what we do it here, the painting or uh, say non-destructive testing, analyzing and painting. This is ready to fit into the engine. This has to come to us at multiple stages. Okay. You know, when the forging is done, and we have to see whether the forging has been done properly, that is called non-destructive testing, we do it. And uh, then uh, when the uh, machining is done, then we do the uh, another set of non-destructive testing and anodizing. At the end of the day, with all the technology, you cannot scale if you don't have the right people, mm. the skilled people ever in training and all that. That is where we invest more time and how do we train our people over a period of time we have built a very robust uh, training mechanism uh, for our employees overall from going from like level one to level Those five where do you get the trainers the from? trainers it like has been built over a period as a part of ecosystem we build ourselves right? as a cycle we started a long time back the journey of uh, acus uh, knowledge uh, center uh, what you call and uh, that's where we started saying, okay, hey, how do we build? Because our whole ecosystem again come from the surrounding or all our people who work in this uh, ecosystem are from the same region.
okay they are just 20 30 kilometers from here and everything and we didn't want to go and bring people from outside and generally like in terms of the people our thought was that it has to be from locally bringing people and creating also it brings employment develop the community around the region and everything so it was a, a bit harder journey but at the same time in aerospace when we started aerospace itself was in a very nascent so within india aerospace did not exist that much knowledge was not anywhere existing yeah. so you had to train people from there and we had a global people because of our reach we had global people who joined us very early on to the 9 10 from us uk to help us and teach us aerospace and only thing is we scaled that knowledge across or percolated down to everybody within the organization this is a facility which is called a aeros- uh, assembly facility aerostructure okay. assembly okay and this was actually started as a joint venture with saab aerospace hmm. uh, later you know a few years back uh, we acquired them from them okay. we own 100% of this business now so these are uh, re- this? yeah this is the door okay so uh, this is the door actually it's called actually a door plug it's a, not a operating door Mm-hmm. you know uh, in a certain configuration of an aircraft uh, this original design there was a door and they plug that door because they can put more seats or whatever it is you know so this is a which it's exactly shape and form all everything is like a door only except it doesn't have a mechanism to open and close and you make it from end to end get complete end to end we get some parts from outside we don't do the stretch forming what is stretch forming this is a this is a like a like a skin right uh-huh. that's a stretch forming it's a sheet metal operation okay you take a sheet metal and bend it in that shape where is it done so we don't do that we okay. do it uh, another supplier who does it okay and we bring it in and then detail parts are done and assembly happens here okay you no know, so fully uh, deliver the f- uh, product we, uh-huh. you know so finish parts and then we buy a lot of parts from various locations and then a lot of uh, 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 what we call stuffing happens means various uh, uh, you can see door windows are put in you know in that location uh, yeah, this is a window and the window window is put in ah. and the transparency put in we'll see the final finished uh, door end of the day this is going through the same door that the, that we open not we but they yeah, okay they open, open but it's the same one this one is a specific one doesn't have mechanism okay. you know so then you have say those same door stops you will see when you board right on the left side okay when you boarding the aircraft you know so these are the door stops when you when you see these things you mentioned the specific materials are used yeah and uh, is there any uh, plan to include the research and development aspect of materials look the aerospace industry evolution the material is like a 20 30 year it takes to adapt anything you know new technologies also take like composite takes taken about 25 years to go from aero, uh, military into the commercial aerospace uh, it takes a very long time but we have a lot more low hanging fruits in terms of ability to do in india as a country we should be able to do like a commercial aerospace today we are only doing some amount of aluminum which we use for forging we don't do plates uh, steel we don't very few steel uh, uh, varieties we alum- alloys we are do- able to do today and uh, we still need to do those develop them that's a lot more opportunity in my view and it's not r and d but it's bringing capability into the country in the sundown a fleet of buses carries workers from the vast 250 acre facility to their home these workers head home after a long day of manufacturing doors and engine spinners for world famous aircraft which might not even land in their hometown this is anand padmanabhan signing off from the ground report at the print